So we're here at Aspen's. Uh, we're a charity in the southeast of England. We work across Kent and East and West Sussex, supporting people with autism and learning disabilities. We provide high quality care and support, day services, supported living services, and residential care, where we can support people learning the skills they need to be able to thrive in their communities. So we know that seven in 10 autistic people really struggle with their mental health. And we know 95% of those will have then further difficulties processing sensory needs. So a garden like this, coming back from Chelsea to our site here in Tunbridge Wells, will really allow people to take part in nature and to use gardening as a way of adapting and learning how to cope with those mental health challenges. I like being out in nature all the time because what I like to use the garden for is just for my mental health when I'm feeling depressed or stressed and I like to see some moths land on some plants as well. We can like put some like special lights that would attract them to land on the plants so they can suck the nectar out of it and stuff. And then that special plant that has an amplifying sound that makes the bee land inside it and it makes that amplifying sound. So it will attract my ears and it's like, oh, I can hear that. I was really keen to link my background in psychology with garden design. And so it's a garden that's been based on the idea that plant roots and neurons, they've aesthetically always looked the same to me. But I found some research that showed not only are they aesthetically similar, they mathematically grow in the same way. They follow that same bell curve. So the garden has this footprint that shows these neurons and plant roots that run through it. There's walls that will rise up and go down and they spread throughout the garden. And so the garden has lots of different pockets of sensory planting and I didn't want it to be a garden that was just a sensory garden. I wanted to make it a sensory garden that could target the different senses. And so in the garden we've got lemon verbena and thyme, so plants that you could make a tea out of and you can engage with and touch. Plants for touch, we've got things like rosemary that you can run your hands through. For hearing, we've got breezer that shakes in the wind. For balance, we have this winding path that takes you on a journey through the garden. And underfoot, you have that lovely sensation of the gravel. And there's water as well, which is one of the most prized elements in nature. And you can just tap your fingers on it and you get that calming sensory quality that water gives us. So here on our site in Pembry, um, we have two large polytunnels where people come in into our day opportunities. So at the moment they're growing rhubarb, um, which we're selling down in our cafe on our main site. Being part of a horticulture team, being part of our grounds here and part of nature is really important with their sensory skills, with their independent living skills. So our garden in Chelsea um, is a real good opportunity for them to be part of that. Uh, they're going to be part of the build up to it. They're growing plants within their services, which we hope to actually take to Chelsea with us. They'll be attending Chelsea. Um, they'll be there throughout the week. And then for our wider community, the garden's going to come back here to our site in Tunbridge Wells. For people, so for our staff, for the people we support, for families and friends when they come to visit, they'll be able to be part of this sensory garden within our site here. That's going to be a really important legacy. So Aspen's are really excited about taking part in Chelsea Flash Show. It gives us a chance to be part of something huge, something international, something where we can tell not just a story about Aspen's and the great work that our team does here, but also about the need for uh, charities like Aspen's to get support from the wider public. Uh, the work we're doing here to help people gain their independent living schools is something we want to be able to take to Chelsea to talk to people about that and to, to, to show how amazing the people we support are.